Hi there, it's day six of the 30 days of 30 minute workouts. Don't worry if you're here at day six, if you've not missed anything from the first five days. You can do any workout, you can do all 30, you can do one, you can do whatever you want really. Now today's one's gonna to be a low intensity workout and this one's slightly interesting in that what we're gonna do is we're gonna do five and a half minutes at 20 strokes a minute, but then we're gonna do 30 seconds at 12 strokes a minute. Who rose at 12 strokes a minute? <laughs> but this is all about making sure that you get, it's actually 12 strokes a minute, it's quite interesting to do because of the control and that kind of power and the connection that comes from it. But it's only six strokes of it. And then you do it all again. And so basically you get these little six minute chunks that we're gonna do five times, 30 minutes is done. We get to go for a shower, have something to eat and way hey, our day of training is finished, all right? So I'll talk about the proper pace side of things uh, when we get into the warm up, which is gonna be a four minute warm up today. And we have to set up our machine first. We always have to set up our machine. So on the concept two, head to the drag factor and set that to where you want it to be. If you don't know about drag factor, please just set it somewhere between four and five just don't set it all the way up to ten okay too high is the problem too low isn't the problem if you're not on a concept two then please just set the resistance or whatever you've got so you get a nice feel from the stroke but you're not having to heave to get the machine moving okay next up on your monitor please set it to eye height if you're able to so you're not having to look up you don't have to look down and finally set your foot plate height so that you can come into the front of the machine with your shins pointing vertically comfortably. If you're set too high, that can be a bit tough. If you're set too low, you can go scooting straight past and that just causes power leaks and things. So we're going to do this warm up at around about 20 strokes a minute. And I want you to start power wise, basically as though you were standing up from a squat, because all we're going to think about is pushing our feet at the same time the handle connects to the machine. Okay. I'll explain as we go. Okay. So here we go then in three, two, one, let's go. So the point is that you want to push your feet at the same time as the handle connects to the machine because that's how the power comes from your feet and into the machine should make sense but timing is quite important because if you push with your feet first and leave your hands behind you lose all of that leg drive okay or if you pull too soon you just can't connect with your legs so if you can push and connect your hands at the same time that's the best thing to do. But then you also want to make sure you've got straight arms and a forwards tilt towards the front of the machine as you push in and hold it for about half of the leg drive and then swing over your back and then pull in your arms, okay? Now, if you've got that timing and the position's correct or you're thinking about it, just start to increase that push from your legs. Really you want this to feel kind of how intense it would be to climb up like 10 flights of stairs where you'll be out of breath, the heart rate will be up, but you don't feel like you have to stop. It's not like that scene in Ghostbusters where they have to stop and hang over the stairs. And it's the point of this low intensity row today is to be around about this exertion where you're working, but you never feel like it's hard work. You know your body's getting a good workout, but you could keep going. So that's what the 20 strokes a minute sections will be like. And then just pace wise for the 12 strokes a minute, just see what you can do. It's just about connection. All right, one more stroke here and let's put one foot on the ground oh, and continue rowing. There's a good chance in the video, which I'm replaying from 2021, John, a year ago, will give you some proper pace guides like 2K plus 18 or 2K plus 25. Don't worry about that if you don't have a 2K training pace. Just remember this is a low intensity workout today. One more here and we'll swap feet. Whee. Oh. Almost did that in one fluid motion. Didn't quite work. So the point of this single leg rowing is just to help with your rock of your back forwards or forwards and backwards, getting that lean properly into the front and shins vertical. It's easier to do with just one leg strapped in, you see. Guys, take one more here. Put both feet back in. Oh, that's my MyZone strap starting up. Bit late, mate. 
and then roll with, oh, what am I doing? Oh yeah, straight legs, roll with your back and arms. Too busy talking about my chest strap. So swing over your back, pull in your arms, out with your arms, swing back over your back. So you're just rocking from forwards to backwards and then following with the arms. Okay, so it's important that you pick up the handle with your back first. Okay, let's roll to the front with straight arms and a forwards tilt and just push out from the front. Point here is to get that timing right. Still that push with the feet and the hands connecting. If you just do this part of the stroke, it's easier to concentrate on it. You feel that bite as your hands connect to the machine. As you hold that forwards tilt and straight arms. One more. Ooh, ooh. Yeah, <laughs> there we go. So, like I say, I'm now gonna replay the video that I made a year ago in 2021, where I did this workout. So, John, a year ago, may talk to you about pace guys and stuff, but remember, intensity is meant to be low. Okay, this is a recovery workout to then set you up for uh, tomorrow's tougher one, if you're gonna follow um, the format of these rows or whatever you're gonna do. So yeah, so anyway, enjoy the next half hour. I will see you at the other end of it for a cool down. Right, so I'm gonna be getting into the main session in a few seconds, so get yourself ready for this. Um, I don't think it's particularly anything special to say, it's just we start off at 20 strokes a minute, 2K plus 18, and then we do something after five and a half minutes, and then we just repeat that five times, okay? Simple enough. So, in three, two, one, let's go. Now, 2K plus 18 is still a good old, shove needed from your legs to get there. So it's not like this is a super, we're not tickling the machine. I mean, when I talk about, I've not really done it that much often, that, that much often, that often in like talking about the effort out of 10 values through this uh, 30 days or 30 minutes, I do it in the description on the video, but I haven't really said that much. That like, today's row should feel like a five or six out of 10 on the kind of perceived effort scale. Um, whereas yesterday's will have started off at that intensity, but then as we increased up to 20 strokes per minute, it would have risen to about eight out of 10. But the point is that we really, or well, most of the time, never row any main sessions less than like five out of 10 effort. You're always putting some effort into the machine. Because remember, one out of 10, that's just living. That's sitting on the couch, watching television. And then like two, three, is when you're just walking about the house. Three or four, is just going out for a walk or climbing stairs. And then when you get up to five, that's when you start doing things that put you out of breath, make you work a little bit harder. So this will be about five or six out of 10 today. And then your max sprint workouts, they'll be like nine to 10 out of 10. But if you look at what I have in store tomorrow for doing the 30 minutes is a solid faster pace piece, that will start off probably about seven or eight out of 10 
But then depending on how you get on with the effort, by the end, it should be getting close to 10. Especially if it's a time trial. You never want to finish a time trial and think you could put more in it or more into it. But the thing, the important thing about using an effort scale is that it, your perception of your effort changes through the row. So what you want to do is find a pace. So say this was five out of 10. And so I'm now hitting 203 pace. So that's my five out of 10 for today. So I just hold 203 pace, even if it gets tougher as the row goes on. That's not the point. You don't ease off. Or well, it's the way I train. You don't ease off to keep it at five or 10, out of 10. So that's the danger of, or one of the dangers of using a effort out of 10 scale is the tendency to want to change it mid row or that every time you sit down at the machine it's slightly different whereas training with a 2k pace is always the same no matter how you feel that day 2k plus 18 is still 2k plus 18 Okay, so we're coming up for our first 30 second breakout. Like I say, I'm doing one stroke every five seconds. And the point is to still drive nice and strong, but use that time on your recovery for your technique. So here we go after this one. Right, so drive, handle away, rock, recover, drive, handle away, rock, recover, handle away, rock, recover. This is all about making sure you're in the right positions. Last one and recover. Go. And we're back into 20 strokes a minute and 2k plus 18 pace. So, what were we trying to achieve there? Depending on whether you've done the previous five days of these workouts in this, I don't know, it's not a challenge, it's a thing. Wouldn't really call it a challenge, but maybe it is. Can you work row for 30 minutes a day for 30 days? I suppose that's a challenge. But if you've been doing enough of them, you'll have heard me talk a lot about technique and body position, body angles. And you'll also have heard me talk about the importance of flow. That the stroke needs to flow from phase to phase. That every part of it leads in to the next part. And that's what I was alluding to in the intro about the fact I don't really like drills where you stop. There's the thing called a pick drill, which I still don't know where it came from or why it's called that. Is it because you pick a part of the stroke? To work on? I don't know. Anyway, and the pick drills. 
suggest that you row and then you stop and analyze where you are or you only do specific parts of the stroke which yes I do that in the warm-up but we're still moving so say you are wanting to work on your position at the back of the stroke you would drive and then stop and analyze not to a specific stroke rate but that's the point of it or if you wanted to see what your position was like on the recovery you would drive rock recover analyze you get what I mean I don't need to demonstrate each one do I but as useful as it is to have that analysis I just don't suggest doing it too often because I'm pretty sure it's techniques like that or drills like that that leads people to row a normal stroke like this okay which sure you're still rowing at 20 strokes a minute I was still rowing at the right pace but I was putting in a lot of strain through my body that I didn't need to be so I was holding everything tense at the back of the stroke and then I was having to use muscles that I don't need to use in order to get myself forwards again whereas if you have a flow using your body's momentum to guide you through the stroke it's a much more efficient process and so that flow is what we're going to be practicing in 21 seconds and it helps to think about the arms away as the trigger for the recovery so in three two one let's slow it right down so drive arms away rock bend your knees recover drive arms away rock knees recover arms rock knees recover arms rock knees recover I don't have to keep saying that do I last one and we are back into 20 strokes a minute and 2k plus 18 pace so the point is that as you finish the stroke by pulling the handle in to your chest at run about sternum height you let the natural rebound created by the springiness of your muscles your tendons and your rib cage stretching open that creates just enough of a spring to send your arms slightly forwards again and so what you do 
as you continue that rebound to send your arms straight and then your arms moving forwards because of that forwards momentum that triggers the rise and tilt forwards of your back over your hips so that by the time your hands are past your knees all your upper body weight has shifted towards the front of the seat and because your body weight is forwards all you have to do is bend your knees and you will roll towards the front of the machine and so there's no real pulling yanking or straining going on to get you to the front of the machine it's all about that fluid release of your arms and bear in mind you're not throwing your arms out in front of you I see that a lot people concentrating so much on getting their arms away that they're like in such a rush to get it there which again completely destroys your rhythm but also uses muscles and bits don't know what the bits would be but I said muscles and <laughs> so it must be something that you don't need to be using and that's it it's just doing that demonstration kind of hurt my biceps <laughs> so it's about fluid so I mean about Tai Chi fluid movement through the stroke and it then means that because you've got your timing right and your body position right you don't need to think about a forward lean and straight arms as you come into the front of the machine because you're already there you're in that position and this is my big thing right now is really trying to just set my position and then once I start the recovery I don't move my back or arms at all this is how I'm trying to cure that kind of I come in and I dip it's like I want extra length so I dip but it costs me pace rather than giving me it all right our next breakout is coming up in three two one here we go so drive arms rock knees drive arms rock knees drive arms rock knees went too fast in that last one I'm about a second out here folks sorry which is the danger of rowing at these super slow stroke rates right back up to 20s so I lost the stroke there just to get myself back in time 
It just shows my body especially doesn't want to row quite that slowly. It is an alien stroke rate, but it is useful to let you work on your flow, but also it's useful to give you 30 seconds of a, a back off in terms of intensity and heart rate. Oh, I just noticed I don't have a heart rate today. Can I tell you why? It's because I've gone back to using my Polar H7 for today. Thought I'd give it another go. And again, it's just disconnected on me. Wonder if it's been up at all this session. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is why I don't use it anymore. And why I use the Power Labs heart rate monitor. That's disappointing. Got all this effort of setting up metrics on screen. And you've got a big blank line in front of you. Oh well. So, can you believe it? There's only 10 minutes to go. Hopefully, the combination of how we're breaking up the intervals in this row and my quite scintillating conversation has kept you going quite nicely. I know I've really only been speaking from a technique point of view about the flow and really about the recovery more than the drive, but like I say, there's 30 days worth of rowing going on, so I'm gonna mix up how I talk about technique so that you don't just hear like the the warm-up is quite consistent now like I said how I talk about it I don't really want to do the same with the main rows where I just launch into the same technique script each time so the last thing I'll say about technique just in case this is the first of my videos you've seen is just to really impress upon you that the power from the stroke comes from the legs that you think about pushing the machine away with your legs and you only pull at the back of the stroke nice straight arms forward lean of the back as you push and then halfway through the leg drive you swing over your hips so your back goes from a forward lean to a backward lean and then only after you've started that do you finally bend those elbows and pull into a finish so it goes drive swing pull drive swing pull and if you take the swing out of the equation just from a timing point of view you go drive pull drive pull so the amount of time that you keep your arms straight for. Drive, pull. Drive, swing, pull. Drive, swing, pull. And this is what you need to do even down at 
12 strokes a minute is to think about drive swing pull and then slow down your recovery okay two strokes one more back down to 12 strokes a minute and recover drive swing pull arms swing knees drive swing pull arms rock recover this really lets you think about your posture get up onto your sit bones and then come forwards and that's how you row and we're back for the last of the 20 strokes a minute and 2k plus 18 sections got one more of those slow ones to do and then we're all done we can go about our day which as being as it's lunchtime right now I really hope I can do a quick turnaround because it's a Saturday and I don't have any work to do I'll go in and upload this instantly so I'd really hope what's the time now? it's 10 to 1 UK time I'd hope by maybe around 2 o'clock half 2 today at least the SD version of it should appear and then the 4K versions and the HD shouldn't be too far behind that all just depends what kind of mood YouTube is in today when it comes to processing the video so hopefully you've been rowing this at a sensible pace to let you recover after yesterday and not overdo it so that when tomorrow's roll comes you can go nice and fast now, if you're not hurt already tomorrow's row Sunday morning nine o'clock UK time will be done on the Erg Race app Fitness Matters are running an Erg Race and so I've combined with them to spread word about it you don't have to be have anything to do with Fitness Matters to row just grab the competition code from my YouTube community tab or the Facebook group make sure to log on around about 10 to 5 to 9 and then let's row a good 30 minutes together I'll be well, I'm hoping if I can get the tech sorted I'm hoping to stream it live to YouTube rather than just filming it live or as live and then uploading so keep an eye out for it Ooh. and then in the meantime after today's session make sure to rehydrate take in whatever your body needs you may be a electrolytes kind of person you might just be a water kind of person you might be fresh orange and lemonade that was always my drink of choice after a tough squash match fresh orange and lemonade 
But then today, for lunch, listen to this. Pizza. I know. Who has pizza for lunch? Off out with the kids tonight. Going to Glasgow. It's like a light show in the middle of Glasgow. And because it's quite late, we might not have our, have a decent window to have our evening meal. So instead of having a nice pizza for dinner, we're having it for lunch. And then have like, I don't know, soup or something for dinner. Which will be weird for a Saturday night, to be honest, but hey, at least we're not messing with Friday nights. Okay. Six strokes to go before our last change down, change up, whatever you're doing. Two more. One more. Here we go then. Slow it down. Drive. Arms. Rock. Recover. Drive. Arms. Rock. Recover. And try and be fluid as you move through these. Okay? So you're not going arms, rock, recover. It's a nice fluid arms, rock, recover. Okay? And that's us done. Look at that. Okay then, so I hope you enjoyed that as much as I did. Those 12 strokes per minute really are interesting. It's just it's a chance to kind of focus in on when you connect to the machine. Those low rates, like a low rate and a low drag factor, those are the, the, the that's the way to go if you want to really refine your technique, make sure you're connecting properly in the right positions, all right? So let's get into a two minute cool down. Uh, like I said before, you might be sitting there thinking, I don't need a cool down, but trust me, you do, okay? <laughs> Just trust me. So here we go then. So run about the same pace that you're really doing those 18 strokes a minute at. Uh, yeah, and just let this be your cool down. So in three, two, one, let's go. Now the key pace wise for a cool down is just to make sure you're not overexerting yourself. Like your heart rate would have dropped a little bit while you were kind of between the end of the row and the start of this cool down. And so the point is, that you don't want it to rise again. It's okay if it hits the same level and maybe kind of goes up about five beats or something, but you don't want it to kind of go back up to where it was because that's you basically just going back to <laughs> exactly the same effort. And that's not a cool down, that's just another shorter interval because you're using this to just let your muscles breathe again, circulate that blood around your body, get the carbon dioxide out of your muscles, out of your blood and make sure that you live to fight another day so after all, like I said in the intro if you are following these 30 minute workouts in order tomorrow's row well actually tomorrow's row is a elective you row how you choose so you can do it slow, medium or fast but if you want to follow the strict structure to this kind of series then tomorrow should be basically a 30 minute hard row so I'm going to do it 24 strokes a minute at about 2k plus 12 pace and then that will turn it into a top tier row for me or you could go like 26, 28, try and see if you can break, hit a PB, it's up to you, it's entirely up to you to be honest, you can even go slow if you wish, alright last stroke here for the cool down, you of course don't have to stop cooling down, you can join me for stretching if you wish, if you don't have time please at least stretch your quads and your hamstrings, not in the shower, don't want you to fall over but find somewhere where you can stretch your quads and your hamstrings okay, or you can join good old uh, stretchy John, he'll take you through uh, some stretching or you can follow me as I do some on the rower stretching for those folks that don't have space to go on a stretching mat. So 
Strap's still loose, so you can flick your toes up against them slightly to create a better ankle, uh, ankle? It's because I was thinking ankles. Angle between your feet and your shins. And then hands in the air and fold forwards. And as long as you get that fold forwards right, and you're not bending from the lower back or the upper back, you should really feel right in there. Now over the, what are we on day six? Is that right? Yeah. So if, you've, if you have been following this series and you've been hanging around for this stretching, hopefully you've got an idea of what you need to be doing with your, your leg muscle, your, sorry, your leg angles in order to get that hamstring stretch from here. Okay, like if you're not getting it right in the hamstrings, if you're getting it more in your knees, then something's not quite right. Let's move on to glutes next. So one foot up on the rail, bring the other foot over, put your heel into the crook of your knee, bring this knee across your body so you've got a straight line between your head, your knee and your foot. Hold it in place with the other arm. Use the back of the machine to steady yourself if you wish and then rotate down into that glute. Oh, this is very tight today. What a strange. Feels really, really solid. What did I, oh, I suppose I was doing more high rocks training yesterday and that was that involved lunges uh burpees sled pulls rows and something else or is that it but yeah four rounds of it so it's no wonder my glutes are a bit tired today <laughs> today so other leg same thing hold it in place let's see what this one's like oh this one's the same because those because the, the lunges that you do in high rocks are um, sandbag lunges. So I've got a 20 kilogram sandbag across my back, across my neck, really. Up on my shoulders, that's, that's the best way to say it. And then uh, doing, what was yesterday, 16 lunges. Uh, but you have to make sure that your back knee touches the ground. So it's like a proper deep lunge. And, oy, it's great, it's so much fun, I love it. So let's move on to quads. So stand ups next to the machine. If you wish to hold on to the monitor just to steady yourself. I can't find my foot. <laughs> steady your foot. And then hold your uh, heel up against your backside. And then put enough of a pull on it that you can feel the stretch going into your quad. Like I say, you're not trying to rip your leg in half pulling so hard. You should find the right amount of posture leaning between uh, where you are here. Ah, oh, that you can get a decent stretch into your squat. Your squad? Yeah, into your squad. Right, try your other leg without holding on to something. See if you can do it without falling over. Yeah, yeah, I managed it. As he falls over. But yeah, and again, I've said this a few times, hold on to like the uh, upper part of your foot rather than the toes or the ball of your foot and that'll uh, help prevent you stretching your tendons and your toes and things too much because you don't want to do that. The whole point here is to stretch your quads, not rip apart your toes. Right, so let's do, I'm going to swap the other way around. Uh, what way do I want to go? Uh, that way. <laughs> every day, every day. So I'm going to do knee on the ground for hip flexor first. Sorry, that was what the havering was. So knee on the ground, other foot to the knee up. I know podcast people doesn't help much, but and then push this hip for oh, push this hip forwards. The one with the knee on the ground. Oh crikey, I've got no balance. There we go. So still with a good posture, you just push that hip forwards so that your uh, knee that's in front, instead of being directly above your foot, now goes over the top of your foot. And then that right angle in your back leg then opens up so it's more like I don't know what that'd be about, 110 degrees instead of 90 degrees. Don't know, hard to tell. I'm looking at a mirror that's sideways and reflected on itself, so I can't quite tell what the angle is. <laughs> and there's a rowing machine in the way. Who put that there? <laughs> right, and then I'll do oh, the alternate, the knee off the ground one for this one. So step forward with a leg you don't want to stretch, up on your toes on the leg you do want to stretch, and then with a good posture, just sink down. Whoop. And if you've if you get that sink correct and you're putting the force into your hip, whoops, rather than, I'll hold on to that for a second, <laughs> rather than into this leg. Don't know what's wrong with my balance today. Um, yeah, rather than like bracing everything into this leg, you want that, the force to be kind of on that sinking leg and that way that's how you get a good stretch into that hip flexor. It's one to play around with, I mean, both, Knee on the ground is, is better, but I give that as an option for those that can't put their knee on the ground for whatever reason. 
maybe there's angry cats down there or something. Let's do forearms next. So hands together in front of your face, push them together, and then push them in front of you. Almost as though you're like Mr. Miyagi going, or it's Wim Hof that does it, isn't it? I made, uh, so yeah, so push the hands together, you should get a good stretch into your forearms and your fingers. Uh, back in, I want to say 2009, maybe? So either 2009, 10, 11, or 12, <laughs> I made a, a, a program, uh, it was a kids' TV program, but it was still like, a great program, about Wim Hof, or Wim Hof, um, called Superhuman Challenge. Um, fascinating guy. Just the fact that he can exist in all those sub-zero temperatures. I think he was, I made a few of them, but he was like really, really fascinating. The other guy was Dean Karnazes. Let's do shoulders next. So hands straight in front of you, cross your body. Um, the ultra, and then like hold it in place. Sorry, and that should give you a stretch in your shoulders. Too busy ranting. Um, yeah, Dean Karnazes, the ultra marathon man, who if you haven't heard about, you should read into it. Um, I don't think my, the, if you do search for superhuman challenge, I don't think it's up there, but um, the Dean Karnazes episode I did, because I'm an editor, I edit TV programs, and the opening to him is one of the, my, the most fun edit I've ever done. Um, I was kind of going all top gear on it, it was great. Swap arms, but his, just him and himself, like being a fitness person anyway, making a program about like a guy that can just run and run and run and run, and his, tip, his core temperature wouldn't go up, his, his lactate threshold is that that we were testing. Um, or his lactate wasn't going up. It was just, it was unbelievable. And actually, and just a really friendly, nice guy as well. Um, I think I since, I think I tweeted him once and got a reply from him and stuff. It's, it's great when you get a reply from someone, isn't it? Anyway, hands about, so we're gonna do biceps next. Hands behind your back as though you're a ski jumper, and then rotate your thumbs backwards. It's backwards? Outwards, oh, sorry. What's he on about? Uh, rotate those thumbs outwards, and that should stretch the long head of your bicep, okay? And give your biceps a stretch. Yeah. I've got, I mean, as much as I'm saying it's good to get reply from someone, I've got quite bad at replying to YouTube comments recently just because I've, as the, the channel's grown, I just get so many. I, it used to be the first couple of years when I ran this channel, every single comment I got, I'd reply to. Whereas I just, I, I just don't have time anymore to reply to them all, which is a real shame. Um, but the one thing I do do, let's move on to triceps next. So hand up in the air, down your back so it touches your spine, and then use your other hand to help that, your arm, so it goes a little bit further back so your elbow points straight up. Um, yeah, if I get a Facebook message, or like a, which I think if I get an Instagram message, it comes through Facebook as well. But if I get like an instant message on Facebook or if I get an email, like a proper personal, someone gets in touch, I reply to every single one of them. But if it's just a YouTube comment saying, um, thanks, I enjoyed this row, uh, those are the ones that I've kind of, that unfortunately, I've just let slip over recent months just because I just get so many of them, which is lovely. Crick, I'm not complaining about getting all these lovely um, messages. Right, other hand, other arm, sorry. But it's, it's kind of, this is one of the reasons, in many ways, I've, I've spoken before about lamenting the fact that I'm not as big as the, the other two guys. I mean, I've got three main competitors. Uh, Cameron Buckins is smaller than the other two, so I'm not really gonna, he's still bigger than me, but the other two main guys, that's me done for the stretching. The other two main guys, get they've got a lot more subscribers than me, a lot more views than me. Um, but I've seen, I'm currently, I'm just about to hit 14,000 subscribers on the YouTube channel and about 6,000, I think, on the Facebook group. Um, and it's grown massively since this time last year. And I've really noticed how hard it is to kind of keep up with all of the, the stuff that I get. Emails and stuff are fine because actually I don't get many emails. It's mostly just YouTube comments. But I just, I just can't keep up with the YouTube comments. So it does make me think if I was to grow to the size of them, what would happen in terms of workload? But that said, if I was to grow to the size of the other guys, then um, I probably, I wouldn't have to, I'd probably stop my day job and be able to focus on this completely. So kind of, swings and balances when it comes to that way. Right, the whole point of me doing this stretching stuff is so that I don't have these big ranty outros and I've just had a ranty outro, but it was about time. We're six days in and I've not had one, so there we go. Uh, so I do hope you enjoyed this workout. Um, like I say, the next one is an elective in terms of uh, how hard you row it. Um, you'll see when, it, when you come to it what, what I'm on about, but yeah, but it's still, don't skip it. It's still very important, okay? Right, so thank you very much for joining me for this one. Until the next video, please take care of yourselves. Be well, bye-bye.